Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And uh, we've got some more news about Hasbro, or, or should we call them Has Been? Oh. Has, has Been. That's what people are actually. That's, are, even a new that's what people are actually calling them. Yeah. Really? Hasbro's Hasbro's not doing very good, guys. Uh, we've done videos talking about the layoffs. We've done videos talking about how they're getting rid of uh, people at Wizards of the Coast. We've done videos talking about all the piles and piles of Star Wars and Marvel and Disney crap mm -hmm. at Ollie's and other places, Ross's and wherever the hell uh, discount toys are, are found. Well, well, part of it is because people don't want Star Wars and Marvel figures. That's not the only reason Hasbro's failing. And I wanna make sure I make that clear because people are like, well, it's only because of those things. No. No. That's not the only reason. That's part of the reason, but that's not the only reason. But uh, we're gonna talk about their losses. They just had their earnings call for, uh, I guess, Q4 last year and it's it's not good mm -mm. it's not good at all i mean they lost over a billion dollars in three months three months three months i had to reread that i about fell out of my chair i thought it was like for the oh they lost a billion dollars this year oh my god they lost a billion dollars in three months wow at christmas time at christmas time i mean just let that sink in a little bit and this is uh this is probably why they they panicked and laid a bunch of people off um, the only bright spot they've had, apparently, uh, two bright spots. It was uh, Baldur's Gate 3, they made $90 million. Mm. And uh, Monopoly Go, they apparently made a bunch of money off of, of that, too. Off of digital stuff. But that being said, you lost a billion dollars in three months. That's Dang. not good. Clearly, the people in charge of Hasbro don't know what the hell they're doing. And they need to get a uh, Nelson Peltz character in there to push for Chris Cox and Cynthia Williams to, to get out because mm -hmm. they don't know what they're doing. So let's uh, let's talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture, news views, and rants. Guys, get woohoo. Woohoo. A woohoo if you do. No woohoos at Hasbro. No. Uh, lots a lot of, of people. A lot of boohoos. Yeah, lots of people getting laid off. Uh, this is coming from CNBC, and uh, I didn't even realize until I think yesterday that this was going on. They reported a 20% revenue drop in the issues – they issued a downbeat 2024 outlook. I mean, 20% isn't as bad as I expected. But, but when, it's you still some, bad. when you hear some of the other numbers, though, you're under, I'm like, how is only 20%? For the last three months of 2023, Hasbro lost $1.06 billion. Right, three months. Drastically wider than the year ago losses. I, I think last year they said it was like $128 million or Well, it says like drastically that. then. Yeah. That's pretty bad. Uh, then they actually lost um, third quarter, Q3. They lost $171 million. Now, I think that was offset because I think Q3, if I remember correctly, that's when they sold E1, their entertainment division. So I think their you know, $500 million or whatever they got probably offset their losses. Yeah. Because that's a pretty – I mean, to go from $171 million uh, to a $1 billion – in uh, Q4, which is again Christmas, it's kind of weird, you know. But yeah, they said this is uh, this is pretty uh, pretty dire. The company reduced its inventory by more than fifty percent compared to the year prior. Twenty twenty three was a productive year for Hasbro, although not without some challenges, says Wait. their CFO. Okay. As we navigate the current environment, we took aggressive steps to optimize our inventory, reset the cost structure, and sharpen our portfolio focus on play with the E1 film and TV divestiture. So we might be seeing some signs of that. They sold off the movie division, right? They sold off uh, the studio that produced the TV shows. And that was Brian Goldner, the previous CEO. Mm -hmm. that, that was his thing, was he wanted Hasbro to be another Disney. He was big into that. He was the one who pushed for the Transformers movies and all that stuff. And uh, E1 is the company that made it. And then they sold them off, I think, to Lionsgate. Now this is we're we're going to sharpen our por portfolio to focus on play, but they laid a bunch of people off at Wizards, right? So mm -hmm. I I, th I don't think there's a long term future. And there are rumors that they're going to sell Dungeons and Dragons, and I think especially with this that I think those rumors actually have merit because D and D is something that they can foist off on a ten. But every time every time it comes out, no, we aren't. No, we aren't. No, we aren't. No, we aren't, guys. No, because they don't know who's gonna who's gonna pay for it. That's about the only thing that's making them money at this point. But why would you lay off? Why would you lay off a whole bunch of people at Wizards of the Coast if you're gonna use them to make D and D products? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or they're gonna license it out or or something. But that being said, they said they're gonna focus on play. We've seen some indications 
that this might actually be the case, that Hasbro might be trying to kind of return to its roots and try to go back to making stuff that people actually want and pricing it correctly. Uh, so these are the new Star Wars figures, which I think they were announced like uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I no, they're very basic. Like, okay, I think sometimes when you get so many points of articulation and everything else, you're ending up upping the price. Yes. Um, I think they also just up the price because they're trying to offset their costs. But these ones seem to be not as articulated, but they seem to be going back to like the basics. When we were kids, they weren't super articulated either. No, these are these are very similar to, and I, they could be reissues from other lines for all I know because I haven't I haven't collected wow. Star Wars toys in forever, so I, I can tell you. But they remind me of Power of the Force two action figures. Now they're ten bucks, of course. You know, Power of the Force two they were five or six bucks, but that mm. was how many years ago? You know, right? But they're basic. You know, the arms move, the head move, the legs move, but they don't seem cheap. We actually, we're going to do a review of a couple. We bought, we yeah, bought let's, some. Let's, let's, let's hold, our, let's hold uh, reserve judgment until we actually open them. We're going to compare it to, uh, to uh, similar toys for other companies. I mean, similar price points, toys for other companies. But they are, they do have a bunch of like $10 toys. They seem to be bringing it back to basics. And the only characters that they're bringing out for this new line so far that I'm aware of, Darth Vader, uh, the Mandalorian, Luke Skywalker, uh, Stormtrooper, Grogu and Ahsoka. Not Ray. Not Ray. No mm. Ray. No Ray. Don't want to go to Ollie's. Don't want to go to Ollie. You can go to Ollie's and find all the Ray. So they're yeah, they're basically banking on characters. I think they know will probably sell, right? And they, they're pricing them right now. These are the other figures that they have now. Um, the Avengers and the Spider Man figures, the Marvel figures, and they have uh, X Men figures like this too. They're ten dollars as well, okay. but they're they're a little more articulated. They have the ball joints. Um, at the shoulders and their arms bend, but again, for ten bucks. See, that's just it because we kept seeing all like the new Ninja Turtles and stuff, like the smaller single turtles were only ten dollars. Yeah, and we were like, well, wait a minute, and even the new Godzilla toys, um, which personally I think the Godzilla stuff doesn't look that great, but the new toys are starting at ten dollars. So I'm seeing a definite price drop across the board with with action figures to make it more affordable for people and for families for kids. You know, yeah, and this is this is like what we would have found when we were kids. This is mm -hmm. kind of the basics. Now, the packaging I think leaves a lot to be desired. Mm -hmm. I think that's <laughs> very very generic, uh, but they do look like a step up from like the dollar store toys you see. The like I saw the the in action GI Joe figures they had where like their arms and head moved and they had like Baroness and Destro and stuff, but they're like little mini vinyl figures. I'm like, God, these are lame. Like, I think the Transformers are already, that don't transform. The Transformers that don't transform or the Transformers, they have the dollar store. They're made out of like cheap ass plastic, you know? Well, that's why I want to open some of these up because here's yeah. the thing. They might look cool in the package, but we're going to open um, a couple of them up to see how they actually hold up, how they actually yeah. feel. Like, yeah. are they, are they, do they feel cheap? They feel like they're going to break. So we're going to do that in another video. Yeah, but uh, I actually was excited. I'm like, you know, if you if you brought like just classic Star Wars back, and you can mix some of the new characters in, right? But but nobody, I'm sorry, nobody wants a Rose Tico. Nobody wants a Holdo figure. Get you know, Vader and Stormtroopers and Clone Troopers and spaceships. Could we get a Falcon again? Could we get an Adat Walker again? You know, something like that. Just go go back to basics. You probably would sell well, those them. Those taller, know? what are the six inch Boba Fett's are still like thirty five dollars. That's they that's are. insane. That's insane. Uh, but it seems like they're kind of pivoting away because like the Star Wars figures were super hyper articulated and they were 15, 20 bucks for a freaking four inch figure. I, th I think that's insane. Uh, so I think, the one, I think they were the one I bought one to compare. So we have two figures we're going to compare. Yeah. And I think it was uh, 17. Oh, my God. Seven, Walmart, 17 mm -hmm. bucks for a Star Wars figure. Yes. That, when I was a kid, they were two ninety nine for, you know, it's a basic single figure. Right. Um, but again, inflation, uh, they're bringing Lil's pet shops back. Pinky boo is so happy. Like, I can't tell you like this girl, like loves pet shops. Like that was like her thing when she was a kid, her go-to toy. It was either monster high or pet shops. Always love pet shops. Um, had the bobbleheads. Yep. And they're bringing them back. I think we mentioned it before that they were bringing them back with like the little codes to play games. Yeah. She is just. On cloud nine about this. But these are these are five bucks and they have multi packs. They're they're like what twelve and fifteen dollars for the multi packs, but they're the original style pet shops. And I know we probably don't have a lot of people that watch this channel that are into Lilith's pet shop. I get that. But th these were like a mainstay for years. And then they started getting stupid with them and then they didn't sell. 
and then they discontinued them for a while. Now they're going back to basics with that. And they're going back to basics with the Star Wars figures. And they're fewer characters, but popular characters at a better now, price now point. Now if we can make My Little Pony not suck. If you can make My Little Pony not suck, go back to the, the G1 or the G3 body styles with the brushable hair and the whole, you know, they're trying to make them action figures. I think that's kind of dumb. So that's what they have to do. But I don't know if it's too late for Hasbro. That's what I'm worried about. I think it might be. Because what you're not seeing anymore uh, out of Hasbro, like, yeah, they're going back to these legacy brands and they're trying to course correct now. Uh, they have Ghostbusters coming out, too. They have a bunch of new Ghostbusters stuff coming that out. That I'm so. looking forward to. Yeah, they have the Freight Features figures, which I'm, I'm really looking forward to because I loved those when I was a kid. But, but, like, they're not creating anything new. Like, Hasbro hasn't done anything new in, like, a decade like, I can't even remember the last new thing that Hasbro's done. Someone's going to correct you. But it's I'm like, sure they will. They'll probably be like, well, I tried doing a new thing and nobody bought it. But they, bought the, they did this one new thing, but, you know, blink did you miss it, you know? Yeah, but it's not like back in the day where they would roll out a new toy line. It would usually be something that was innovative. It was, like, it was innovative. And now it's just, you know, There repurposed. was a story behind it. They would have a tie-in comic. They'd have a cartoon series. They'd have a video game. You know what I'm saying? Most of the IP that they're based everything off today was based off of toys when we were kids. But they keep acting like it was a bad thing. I know, right? Uh, the reason, the reason that this IP is still around. The reason that we have, you know, these Hasbro properties, the reason we have even, you know, other companies' properties like Masters of the Universe, whatever, is that the toy sales bankrolled the cartoon. The cartoon didn't suck. It had a fandom and it cycles around every once in a while. But it just seems like Hasbro stopped making toys for kids a long time ago. They're like, oh yeah, we're going to appeal to adult collectors now. And, you know, we're going to sell them a $55 transformer with hardly any, you know, paint applications on it made of hollow yes. plastic. And I think that we're going to see a change because other companies, I mean, we'll talk about the Godzilla toys and the turtles, but like Playmates, the Ninja Turtles, they've got a bunch of accessories, mm -hmm. you know? Oh, my sister saw the one I had that we were going to review and she was like, where'd you get it? How much was it? I want it. Oh, yeah, like yeah. Raphael and Donatello are my favorites. It was a Raphael. Yeah. And she's just all excited. Like, where'd you get it? Where, where, where how much was it? Because she was bucks. all about it. <laughs> no, that ten was, bucks. Was that 15? I think that was 15. No, he was 10 bucks. He was a $10 one? He was a $10 one. Oh, yeah. I told her 15. I lied no, to you. If you're uh, watching this, if you're watching this, my nephew probably watched it. If you're, if you're watching this, tell, tell your mom I lied. It's only $10. No, the uh, the Ninja Turtles uh, the, the from the new movie, the Mutant Mayhem, uh, mm -hmm. 10 bucks. Actually, no, the retro ones too, because they had like Ray Filet and they had the. Um, the, what are they called? The hidden shell where you could open the shell up and put the, the retro figures. They were 10 bucks too. And they were playmates. And that's not much more. You, you adjust it for inflation because turtles cost more than star Wars back in the day. They were, they were like six or $7 each back then. So you're not paying nope. much more. It might actually be they look less better than the star Wars ones, which we're going to compare. Yeah, they have a lot more we're going to actually open them up and show you another video the godzilla toys they have godzilla toys for like 10 bucks now we got a godzilla rc it's actually walks and it's tail moves i mean now it's not the best rc ever but the best part of it it plays the sounds and it does that woo, 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 yeah. and then it's like screams and it shoots like steam out its mouth and it's amazing 45 dollars. yeah so i think i mean if hasbro is serious they want to go back to making toys they got to make good toys at a good price characters people want and they gotta they gotta start innovating again and i until they do that like this company is just a, a, it's basically a Disney. They basically have a bunch of properties that they're kind of nursing along and uh, they're going back to the same well again and again and again. But yeah, like you, you look at the toys that made us and you watch some of these documentaries about these different toy lines and the people that were involved with them and all the thought that went into it and all the, you know, the behind the scene. And now we're just like, yeah, we're just going to just keep doing the same thing for the next 20, 30 years. We're not going to do anything new. You know, and I feel bad because kids today are kind of robbed of having their own toy line. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like pretty much we hit the nineties. We had Pokemon. Then well, like 2000. Monster like, highs are pretty awesome, but that was early 2000s. That was early 2000s. We had Beyblade back then. You know, there's some other toy lines, but you know, kids today, they don't have their own toy lines. Now Bluey. maybe they, <laughs> what's that? Bluey. Bluey. Yeah. But maybe they don't care. But again, it's little kids stuff. You know what Paw I'm saying? Patrol. Paw Patrol. 
but that's that's preschool. Like you're not seeing the like the elementary school kids. Well, get they got these stuff. new things that you can like. You know, it's kind of like the creature creators, but it's like they have those out now. But yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying it's not to the level. But it could be the kids aren't playing with toys anymore. They could, oh, they are. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's just it's weird. They're all getting hand me downs from from our our childhoods. But uh, there we go. I mean, they might be trying to course correct, but I think it is too late. I think they've they've definitely uh, created a lot of bad will with the Star Wars Marvel in particular, and they're gonna have to go back to like the most popular characters. Well, and the good news is, I think, the, I think one of the problems was the prices, price points were too high. Yeah. And they were like making characters for every figure ever, or figures for every character ever, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think now they're going back to the core popular characters and they're keeping the price point affordable for people because people don't have the extra income they had five, six years ago, no. they might be able to start pulling out a tailspin. Is it enough? I don't know. But it might be enough to, to, to you know, give them some extra time if they, you know, can make good toys for affordable price. Maybe. It might save them somewhat. We'll, we'll see. Or they'll just job everything out. Who the hell knows? But uh, there it is, guys. They lost a billion dollars in, in three, three months. three months. Three months. Damn. I thought that was all year. I'm like, oh, it's not very good. <laughs> they made bad decisions. It's too bad no one told them that they were bad decisions. Anyway. We're going to wrap this up. Yes. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. Bye.